presented by Lawrence Technological University, where Blue Devils dare. Also brought to you by the Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics. The Michigan Army National Guard, a proud partner and official military branch of the MHSAA. My Student Aid, Michigan's go-to resource for student financial aid. Hungry Howie's, famous for flavor. And Sneff Camp Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, serving Metro Detroit since 1926. Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in to the six time Emmy Award winning state champs. This is the show that puts the spotlight on high school sports throughout the state of Michigan. We are proudly presented by our friends at Lawrence Technological University. Their motto, where blue devils dare. Lauren Plant, Jenna Skelsky, your host for the next half hour as we dive into another wild week of prep sports action. It's a great time of year if you're a high school sports fan. In fact, we've already had a state finals. We'll have selected girls tennis state finals from the Upper Peninsula. Plus, we'll have some eight player football highlights on this week's show. Our main event, a huge clash on the football field between our second ranked team in the state, Belleville, and the 15th ranked Dearborn Forts. And tons more football too, but also volleyball and boys soccer highlights on the way. Let's get this show on the road. Here come the highlights. We begin with football. Here we go, two four and one teams with a lot on the line. OAA Red Duel and it was homecoming at West Bloomfield as they welcomed in Rochester Adams. First quarter, senior quarterback captain CJ Harris getting the offense moving downhill, bullet to Ethan Bunch, he's got burst. Works the sideline all the way inside the five. No surprise, The Rock would then go to their four star workhorse, the junior Donovan Edwards doing what he does. He's across the goal line, West Bloomfield up seven. Adams only lost this season to Lake Ori in first possession, scrimmaging from their own 10. They put it in the hands of Anthony Petrillo. He's going to work. Far sideline, back to patrolling the middle. 51 yard gain to put the Highlanders in Laker territory. Next play, Petrillo at it again. Takes it to the outside, racing the goal line. Pay dirt. 14 yard score. But it didn't take long for the Lakers to strike again. Donovan Edwards, dominant in this one. Up the gut, taking no prisoners. See ya! Following a field goal, held a 17-6 advantage. Second quarter, big play West Bloomfield dialing it up again. This time, Harris with pinpoint accuracy into the arms of Edwards. He gone! 79-yard pitch and catch. West Bloomfield wins a big one. Five and one now, and in the OAA red driver's seat, they beat Rochester Adams 30 to six. In a big time Catholic League matchup, we had the Shamrocks from Detroit Catholic Central taking on the Warren De La Salle Pilots at Wayne State University. First quarter action, the Pilots on the opening drive get it down to the CC one yard line. Junior running back Brett Stanley takes the give and is able to get the ball over the goal line for the touchdown. The De La Salle faithful pumped up after that one as they led 7-0 after one, and that score would hold through the half. And the boys in purple and gold would cap off the scoring for the night. Senior QB Anthony Stepnitz sneaks it into the end zone to put them up 14-3, and after a scoreless fourth quarter, that would do it, as Warren De La Salle pulls out a huge win over Detroit Catholic Central, 14-3 the final score from Wayne State. I'm Alex Sims from the Lansing area. Mason hosting Fowlerville, both programs 5-0. Mason gets the ball rolling early. It's quarterback Chase Strickland from seven yards out, calls his own number, pushes his way into the end zone to make it a 7-0 Bulldogs lead. And well, there was more where that came from. Second quarter, it's Strickland with the handoff to Michael McGuire, who dodges not one, not two, but three defenders for another Mason TD. But the Gladiators answer on the next possession. It's Fowlerville QB Kyle Lutz with the honors. He says, guys, I got this and takes it all the way into the house to put the Glads within a touchdown, but Mason was just too good. Here is the icing on the cake. Strickland connects with Jaden Acevedo right in the bread basket. That will seal it up. Mason wins 21-14 and is now 6-0. I'm Kevin Trozinski, and we go to a huge volleyball game on the west side of the state from Tuesday night. As the defending Division II state champs, Grand Rapids Christian was at home to take on the Hudsonville Eagles. And we pick things up in the first set. Hudsonville in the near court, Carlina Bender feeds it to Breely Harama for the spike as the Eagles take the first set. Grand Rampus Christian, the number one team in D2, answers in the second set. 
The Miss Volleyball candidate, Jordan Gate, sends it over to Evie Dozma for the spike, and they even it up at a set apiece. It went back and forth in the third. Hudsonville's Olivia Howlett comes up with the block in front of the net. Eagles take set 3, 26 to 24. But the defending state champs, Grand Rapids Christian, responds in the fourth. The Arkansas commit Gates with another dish again to Dozma for the spike. They take the four set and we're headed into a tiebreaker. It would be too much Hudsonville on this night. The Indiana State bound Mallory Keller with the game clinching spike as Hudsonville goes on to beat Grand Rapids Christian in five sets. <laughs> Today we'd like to introduce you to the Michigan Consensus Statement and Beliefs for Youth Football. Done right, youth football can be a positive and safe experience for kids. But unfortunately, there are a number of community or club-based programs that take things too far. The Michigan High School Athletic Association has joined with the Michigan Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association, the Michigan High School Football Coaches Association, and the Michigan Trainers Society to develop a list of core beliefs that should guide all youth football programs in Michigan. Among those beliefs are calendars which coincide with high school programs, starting in mid-August and playing a maximum of eight games, flag football being played until the fourth grade, and not introducing any kind of contact until the fifth grade. Focusing on skill development for all participants and learning multiple positions and practice limitations that are patterned after MHSAA programs for the length of time and the amount of full contact. Using background check coaches who have completed Michigan concussion law requirements, trained in basic first aid and schooled in the participation philosophy and skill development approach to youth football. The ultimate goal is to build cooperation between high school and youth football programs to grow the game. School coaches and athletic administrators should help influence youth programs to put these beliefs into practice for the well-being of their kids. You can read the entire statement on the football page of the MHSAA website. The MHSAA Student Broadcast Program enables students to learn how to produce TV-like events that showcase our school excellence. Now this doesn't necessarily have to be covering sports, it can be daily newscasts, graduation, whatever your heart desires. The bottom line is the Student Broadcast Program strengthens the connection between the school and the community. It can also turn into a great fundraiser for your school. For all the information to get your school connected, Contact the MHSAA office at media at MHSAA.com. They are great partners of ours and we love to help grow the next generation of production superstars. Lots more coming up when State Champs returns. I've always been really good at math and science and I knew I wanted to work in healthcare but not as a doctor. So I chose Lawrence Tech's biomedical engineering program. I've pushed myself to take internships, like this one, at a hospital in an orthopedic research lab. Thanks to Lawrence Tech's unique, hands-on style of education, I'm graduating with a published research paper and a job. Lawrence Tech, where Blue Devils dare. Need money for college? You need My Student Aid. My Student Aid is the go-to resource that helps Michigan families find money to pay for college. Plus, they'll guide you through the financial aid process and answer any questions you have. For grants, scholarships, and more, connect with My Student Aid, helping make college affordable for everyone. Learn more at michigan.gov slash mistudentaid. Hungry Howie's wants to thank you. Yes, you, how long can I stay on this couch guy? Super dad who prevented birthday disaster and the late night study group that ordered 17 pizzas. Thank you to the holy moly did you see that fans. And thank you, whole slice and one bite kid. Because for every pizza sold in October, we make a donation to the National Breast Cancer Foundation. And together we've raised nearly $3 million just by doing what you love. Hungry? Howie's. Welcome back to State Champs. I'm Devin Gardner, former Inkster Viking quarterback and Michigan Wolverine. Let's get back to the highlights. I'm Jeremy Otto, and we had to some eight-player football action in the thumb as undefeated Deckerville traveled to 4-1 Mayville on Military Appreciation Night. 
Second quarter action, Mayville down 14-0. It's QB Austin Middleton who drops it off to Steven Gilbert who does the rest. The Wildcat back zigzags his way down the middle of the field and cruises his way into the left side of the end zone. The Wildcats would go for two and miss. Deckerville held a 14-6 lead. Deckerville looking to expand their lead again. It's senior Carlos Ibarra who punches it in from four yards out to put the Eagles up 20-6. Deckerville trying to capitalize on a turnover in the waning moments of the half. They took to the air with Isaac Keenath, who lofted one to the back of the end zone for Trayton Kalesa. Eagles took a 36-6 advantage into halftime. It was all Deckerville in this one. The pitch to Bowerman and he works the edge and sneaks past the pylon. The Eagles took the game by a final score of 44-12 and advanced to 6-0 on the season. I'm Chuck Pellerito, and let's head over to the Blue Water Area Conference where the Almont Raiders hosted the Armada Tigers. First quarter, and the Raiders already up seven. Josh Hellebuck drops back and airs it out to a wide open Colby Chapman for a 38-yard score. Raiders up 15. Second quarter, Jack Popper rips this one off the right side and up the sideline, lowers his shoulder. He will not be denied at the goal line. Raiders up 29-0. Armada's Eric Keating skies one up to Joshua Bowman, who outjumps his man and gets the Tigers on the board 41-7 at the half. But the Raiders go on to win 48-14. For extended highlights and interviews, go to statechampsnetwork.com or check us out on Facebook and YouTube. We've got a wet one for the Catholic League Cardinal Championship as Royal Oak Shrine took on University of Liggett for the second time in four days. Liggett looking to strike back on the free kick. Matthew Summers puts this one up high, and did we mention it's a wet one? Steven Rule has it slipped through his hands, and Stuart Smith is there to put it home, and this one's tied up at one at the half. Back and forth we go. Noah Gappy with a crossfield pass. Jalen Ramirez quickly puts it in front of the net, and it's finally Kevin Wright who buries this one just outside of Sword's reach. Shrine back up, 2-1. to one. 20 minutes left in this one, and Liggett would strike back. Nolan Andersma takes the pass and puts this one on goal from 30 yards out, barely getting past Rule, and we're tied again at 2. Liggett getting the corner kick. Andersma lofts it up, Stuart Smith with the header that's blocked, and finally banged in by Matthew Summers. That will give Liggett the win and the Cardinal League Championship dethroning Shrine from a year ago. This is Alan True from 24-7 Sports with this week's State Champs Recruit Report brought to you by My Student Aid. The Ohio Mac schools have been aggressively recruiting the state of Michigan recently. The Toledo Rockets came up and offered several players from the state, including Oak Park safety Jalen Mines. Six foot two, 185 pound junior Mines now has several offers, including Iowa State, Kentucky, and now the Rockets. Toledo also offered Detroit Cast Tech defensive lineman Clarence Wilson, six foot three, 250 pound junior, who has four offers total. Wilson says he's hearing from several Big Ten schools as well, including Michigan, who he's set to visit, and Purdue. For this week's State Champs Recruit Report, I'm Alan True. The Recruit Report is brought to you by My Student Aid, Michigan's go-to resource for student financial aid. Go to michigan.gov slash mistudentaid for more information. Hey, what's up, guys? We are in week six, and we are in the thick of the Hungry Howie's Mr. Football and Anvil Award competitions. There are two changes in our Anvil Award Top 10. Former Canton coach and Hall of Famer Tim Beckler will talk both of them, and you can watch it right now on all State Champs socials, YouTube channel, and website. The Mr. Football race, really thickening. Davison quarterback Brendan Sullivan just went in late last week. Check out this week's update by the great Sean Belizean. Go to statechampsnetwork.com and support Hungry Howie's, famous for not just flavor, but truly supporting high school sports. The greatest honor a high school senior student athlete can earn, Detroit Athletic Club's Athlete of the Year. You're one of the tops in your sport. Prioritize education and give him back, like Cassius Winston, Megan Bobian, Rakia Jackson, and Aiden Hutchinson did. Six male, six female nominees earn $1,000 in scholarship money, with $5,000 each to be awarded at a red carpet gala in downtown Detroit. Nominations accepted now. Download the application, DACAthleteoftheyear.com. I'm on the Blue Devil football team, and that's a great place to be because other colleges wouldn't let me be both a football player and a nursing student. And just because I'm a dog on the field doesn't mean I can't take care of people. And man, do I love people. The small class size at LTU can give me awesome access to my nursing professors. Lawrence Tech, where Blue Devils 
Dare. The ones who wake up every morning ready to take on the world. The ones who push their limits to be better than the rest. You are looking to join a team of leaders who want to be challenged. You want to be pushed to your limits. You value freedom and think you have what it takes. The ones with speed, strength, intellect, and determination. Michigan Army National Guard, we see you. You do know you want a contest to spend a whole day with me, right? Mm-hmm. And you just want to sit here and eat this delicious pizza? We could do other things. Mm. 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 A little help? Mm. The best day ever! Some people will do anything for flavor. Now get a meal deal to fit any budget at the home of Flavored Trust. Hungry? Howie! I'm Jason Hunton from the West Michigan area. We start in the Sac Valley Schoolcraft at Constantine. Big game, and the Falcons get going early. Freshman Braden Clark off right tackle, 26 yards into the end zone. The home team strikes first with a 6-0 lead. Schoolcraft would come back, though, on the arm of junior quarterback Alex Thole going up top to Harmon DeVries. For the touchdown, Schoolcraft would build a 14-6 lead. Make it 20-6 when Caden Hetmansberger finds the freshman Clark on the pass into the end zone. We had a 20-18 game at the half, but in the fourth quarter, the Eagles go to their star senior running back, Kobe Clark, into the end zone. Schoolcraft improves to 6-0 with a 27-24 win over their rivals. Unity Christian at Zeeland West in the OK Green. Both teams coming in 4-1. First quarter, Sater strike first. Quarterback Isaac Tesla right up the middle. Unity Christian led 7-0. Zeeland West would come right back, though. They hand to Evan Eating, the running back having a really nice season. And he gets a long gainer here. Hits pay dirt. Extra point no good. It was a 7-6 Unity Christian lead at the half. Third quarter. Carson Gulker, the junior quarterback, over the top on the sneak, end of the end zone. Zeeland West gets the big win, 20 to 14. Ducks now five and one on the season. I'm Jake Durant from the UP. Let's start Nagani with the D1 UP Girls Tennis Championships. The Miners looking for their sixth straight title, beginning with number two doubles Tiana Williams and Shaylee McKinnick of Nagani against Emily Maringer and Emma Delar of Gladstone. Nagani playing the net really well in the first set. Slice shot there puts Nagani up. It's the other Miner charging the net here. She's going to paint the back line. Miners take number two doubles, 6-3-6-2. Number two singles now, Marquette's Molly Kilpula facing Menominee's Josie Hofer. Kilpula had it going early. First set, the strong backhand to the drop shot. Then it's Kilpula again with the backhand. She's your number two singles champ, winning in straight sets, 6-love, six 6-1. Love, six number one doubles, Morgan Carlson and Caitlin Lamia of Nagani against Riley Jackson and Kennedy Tate of Menominee. That's a nice shot there by the Miners. Maroons would take the early lead, but the Miners would rally, taking number one double six two six one. We'll finish up with number one singles. Marquette's Alyssa Olivier taking on Menominee's Jenna Noldi. Olivier up in the first set. Noldi unable to return the shot. Olivier is your number one singles champion, winning in straight sets, six love, six two. Marquette wins their first D1 title since 05, ending Nagani's five-year run as champions. Let's head now to Kingsford for the D2 finals, beginning with number one singles. Madeline Koski of Westwood against Macy McCormick of Iron Mountain. Nice volley here between the two. A couple of nice forehands, but McCormick going to hit that shot wide. Later, McCormick going to bring some heat, but Koski with a nice return. She's going to take it 6-1, 6 love. In number two singles, Tessa Lease of Westwood facing Iron Mountain's Claire Mongrain. What a shot there by Mongrain to get the advantage, but Lease is going to fight back. And with the advantage here, she's going to be able to put the game away. She wins in straight sets, 6-3, 6-2. Six, six, Finishing up with number two doubles, Emily Nelson and Anna Malmquist of West Iron going up against Ellie Milley and Megan Johnson of Westwood. Nice shot there by the Patriots, but the team of Nelson and Malmquist too strong. They win 6-1, six, 6-3. Six, In the end, the Westwood Patriots are your 2019 Division II UP champions. Time now for an inside look at Lawrence Technological University. LTU offers a wide variety of opportunities for students interested in studying abroad for a full semester or even if you're looking to participate in other international experiences that range from one week or an entire summer. LTU really has it all. Going overseas is a great way to develop as a leader with a global view. If you're interested in studying abroad and want to learn more about joining this program, check out ltu.edu now. 
Great news, applications are now available for nomination consideration for this year's Detroit Athletic Club Male and Female Athlete of the Year. Six males and six female athletes will win a $1,000 scholarship. And like Madison Heights, Bishop Foley's Kendall Taylor and Detroit Edison's Rakia Jackson did a year ago, the winner will receive a $5,000 in scholarship money and have the great honor of being named the Michigan High School Athlete of the Year. This award is for seniors only. You have to be a first team All-State athlete in your sport or projected to be one later this school year. You need at least an overall 3.0 GPA and have demonstrated school leadership or have served as a volunteer in your community. If you fit the bill, download the application at our special website, dacathleteoftheyear.com. The deadline to apply is February 3rd, but don't wait. Maybe you'll be invited to the Red Gala Awards Show hosted by our own Lorne Plant next May. Once again, go to dacathleteoftheyear.com to download the application today. I admit it, I love working with money, negotiating, and making big decisions. That's why I'm majoring in finance and economics at Lawrence Tech. What's truly amazing about the education here is the small class sizes that give me easy access to my professors who truly care about my future. They even helped me get a great internship. And I was able to fulfill my lifelong dream of playing college golf. Lawrence Tech, where Blue Devils dare. You do know you want a contest to spend the whole day with me, right? Mm-hmm. And you just want to see her eat this delicious pizza? We could do other things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A little help? Mm. It was the best day ever! Some people will do anything for flavor. Now get a meal deal to fit any budget at the home of Flavored Trust. Hungry? Howie! Champs High School Sports Show is Southeast Michigan's home for football highlights. State Champs High School Sports Show. Your team, your game, your highlights. Welcome back to State Champs. Hey, the main event this week, a show me game for both teams involved. On the one hand, Belleville. We have them ranked number two in the state and rightfully so. They have rolled the opposition, but what was the quality of that opposition really? Dearborn Fordson, a quality opponent. We have them ranked 15th coming into this week, a win here, and they will jump the rankings considerably. Both teams 5-0, let's see what went down to Dearborn. Here we go. Two teams playing just their second year in the KLAA East, meeting for a third time as divisional foes, number two Belleville at 15th ranked Dearborn Fortson. One year ago, these two fought hard for four quarters before the Tigers upended the Tractors by a 29 to 26 margin. Our main event features a battle of the unbeatens thus far in 2019. This would be three in a row over Fortson if the Tigers came out on top. We picked this one up midway through the second quarter. Belleville up 3-0. Fortson going to work on the ground. The senior, Keyshawn Smith, spins his way into the end zone. Tigers would notch another field goal with 33 seconds left in the half to knock the game up at six. That score held late into the third. Final minute of the quarter. Tractors junior signal caller Ali Beydoun looking to make a big play. He does. Perfect toss to a wide open Andrew Holston. 14 yard score. Fortson led 13 to six into the fourth. Minutes later, Belleville bounced back. The Mr. Football Kennedy, Christian Dury, putting his stamp on the game, chucks this one to Jalen Williams. Game nodded at 13. But Fortson would have an answer. Five minutes ago, faced with a fourth and one from the Belleville Four. Kiem Moore, the mayor of Pound Town. Tractors went for two and failed. They led 1913. Tigers turn things back over to their three-year starter, Do Reed. Airs it out. Daryl Johnson hangs on for a 33-yard connection. Belleville back in business. CDR went 11 of 22 for 206 yards, two touchdowns. Pass to the junior wideout, Connor Bush, who pins it against his helmet. He's got it. 
Belleville moves to 6-0 and as they hang on to defeat Dearborn Fortson for their 30th straight regular season victory, 20-19 the final. All right, we're here with Belleville's quarterback, Christian Dureed. Christian, you guys were down in the game with fourth and goal. What was going through your mind with the game on the line? Um, a lot was going through my mind, but I had to realize like I'm a, I'm a junior and I got to just sit down and calm down and just let everything develop into, to itself. It's now time for the MHSAA Clip of the Week. We go back to West Bloomfield for this one as Donovan Edwards bullies his way through this crowd of Highlanders for one of his three scores of the contest. That's the MHSAA Clip of the Week. Touchdown, I can't tell you how much we love doing this show and we hope that you love it too. We love hearing from you, story ideas, games we need to be at, or you just want to talk high school sports with us. Go to our contact page at statechampsnetwork.com. If you want to get the high school football scores and reactions right after the games, join us on State Champs Michigan Extra Point live every Friday night beginning at 10.30 p.m. on State Champs Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube channel. The show always streams live, and it's your best way to interact with us right after the game. Stay connected with us all week long. Follow, like, and subscribe to State Champs on your favorite social media platform. We're on all of it. You can also subscribe to our weekly newsletter by emailing us. Just go to the contact page at statechampsnetwork.com. The first thing you should do every day is check our website, statechampsnetwork.com. Vote in the Hungry Howie's Mr. Football Race. Vote for the Anvil Award. Check out Matt Mowry's ranking, Scott Bernstein's blog, and so much more. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next week on State Champs. State Champs is presented by Lawrence Technological University, where Blue Devils dare. Also brought to you by the Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics. The Michigan Army National Guard, a proud partner and official military branch of the MHSAA. My Student Aid, Michigan's go-to resource for student financial aid. Hungry Howie's, famous for flavor. And Sneth Camp Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, serving Metro Detroit since 1926.